Having a clue what I'm holding on to, your arms are probably about as smooth as a baby butt. <coughs> so, I'm just gonna hop down and welcome you guys to the next little installment. <coughs> Alexandria. <coughs> hopping around like a monkey. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the next installment, which is Education in Alexandria. Which is a super short one, but I think it'll be fun. Book thieves. All ships entering Alexandria were searched for books, which were often copied and became part of the library. In some cases, the copies were returned and the originals kept in the library. Stones thrown away, the pharaohs took 12 years to construct. The pharaohs. Oh, oh maybe you're afraid of statues or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Education in Alexandria. Learn how young Alexandrians were educated. Welcome to Education in Alexandria. The education of young Alexandrians did not differ from the one generally dispensed elsewhere in ancient Greece. At the age of seven, the child was taken in charge by a tutor who then became responsible for instilling an elementary education as well as good moral principles. Interesting. Better hope to you liked your tutor at age seven. Bull, fifth century BCE. Apologies for the butchering of the journey. Antikin Samlo. Antikin Samlo. Berlin, Almanj. Photo copyright BPK Berlin. Distributed by Roman Grand Palais. Jonas Laurentis. Yes, my German pronunciation is terrible. So deep apologies. Please don't be offended. Teaching was generally done outside, in the open air. In the gymnasium, students were taught not only sports, but also topics such as rhetoric, philosophy, music, and poetry. All things deemed essential to one's education at the time. Archaeological site of Olympia, Greece. Gymnasium, 2007 copyright UNESCO, Francesco, Vanderen. And a fun little story that I personally have about these little things is, um, I want to say it was Plato. Plato? Yeah, it was Plato who had been talking about this. And I forget the name of one of his students, a fellow philosopher, and But um, one of his fellow contemporaries was, you know, another student of his, former student, an older student, now an adult. He was busy listening into him, and he. Plato proudly proclaimed that uh -huh. human being is any featherless, featherless biped thing that has no feathers and walks on two legs. So the next day, as class was starting, what happened? His contemporary <laughs> walks into class with a plucked chicken and says, hey look guys, it's a dude, or the ancient Greek version of that. And because of that, yeah, Plato kind of admired him for having the guts to do it, which makes sense. Anyways, tangent over, because these stupid kids in these stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, both girls and boys are shown attending a class given by one of the rhetoricians of the era. The team made the choice to show both genders attending class within the context of the game world. 
Even though it is historically inaccurate, the team felt it was not necessary to prioritize historical sexism over inclusive gameplay. Which makes sense because oh, I'm I'm not not girls girls not necessarily from their repetitions, <laughs> as you say, but from, you know, and, or some, from some rhetoricians, like the daughters of the rhetoricians, uh, the flocks, or the flocks, 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 the Face, Kalepis, depicting a dance lesson, 5th century BCE. Photo copyright the British Museum London, distributed by Roman Grand Palais, the trustees of the British Museum. <laughs> I don't know if anyone reads Greek, but uh, it's like. Oh, I do I don't Alright, so I wonder, could we fit anyone in here? Maybe? This one really short. Wow, these. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze those, maybe these three. Islands of Pharos, the Pinium, and the Hippodrome of Alexandria together. In the meantime, I will also be doing the Great Library of Alexandria. Perfect. That will be another one we're doing today. Ptolemy Kingdom, founded in 305 BC by Ptolemy the First Soda, the Ptolemy Kingdom was a powerful dynasty stretching from present day Libya to Lebanon to northern Sudan. The Drachma Point was stamped with the Eagle of Zeus. Pyramid building spree took place during the Old Kingdom, a period that lasted from 268. The Great Library of Discover the history of the greatest library in antiquity and learn about the great minds of the ancient Esmeralda. Welcome to the Great Library of Alexandria. Near the district of royal palaces and within the Moseon was the most famous library of all antiquity. The Library of Alexandria was built to house all of human knowledge. At its pinnacle, the library was believed to contain over 700,000 parchments. And keep in mind, I'd say maybe 10 parchments would make, you know, two good-sized textbooks, so uh, you know, five good parchments, which we assume those are all big parchments for, uh, you know, a textbook-sized book, so if we can crunch the map, divide it by five, which I'm not going to do, because I am not a mathematician, I'm a historian person. Okay. Throughout the centuries, fires and wars between Christianity and paganism destroyed the library, leaving nothing behind. The loss of the building, and more importantly, its vast collection, is immeasurable. As no descriptions are available, the team's rendition of the Library of Alexandria was inspired by the visuals of the Library of Chalcis at Ephesus. Library of Chalcis, Ephesus, Roman period. Photo copyright, Archives Alinari, Florence, distributed by Roman Grand Palais, Fratelli Alinari. And I just gotta say, it's a shame to put a curtain on so many times because 
so many people have our heads so far in their butts that they could not realize, oh hey, information's information. Oh, well, it doesn't it conflicts with this thing that I personally believe in. If I had, you know, get out of jail free card. Will this be steps as the next in the loading? Me then. Will this eora get the afternoon and as he dare? While much of the collection was purchased at the government's expense, the library also obtained books through other means. Any books owned by travelers coming through the city were seized to be copied for the library. The copy would then be returned to the owner and the original entered into the library's collection. I gotta say, when I was reading uh, the library also obtained books through other means. I was like, what are they doing? Do the, do the librarians have a mafia? I think that's what I was first hearing when I listened to that, but makes sense. Library of Alexandria, 2016, art by Rafael Deslandes. Copyright Ubisoft. Alexandria offered unrivaled intellectual and cultural attractions. Eminent scholars from Athens, Rhodes, and other Greek centers traveled to the city to learn and engage with other free thinkers. Both the Moseon and the library were at the center of groundbreaking ideas and creative expression. Okay, so I was right. It was a cat. Clearly, it wasn't a gymnasium, but you know, a place of Plato's Academy, Academy Mosaic. First century BCE, Museo Nazionale Archeologico Naples, Italy. CCO 1.0 PD 1923. And mm this -hmm. one is a the great minds of antiquity were usually well versed in many disciplines, which were often associated to specific schools of thought. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and the Cynics were among the most well-known schools of the time. It is clear that Alexandria lived up to its fundamental role as a city for intellectuals, nurturing many great minds whose impact reverberates through our modern world. Auditorium, 2016. Art by Raphael Deslandes. Copyright, Ubisoft. And man, you gotta hand it to this land is as well because this this is very um, fascinating work. It's not you know it doesn't quite as pop as um, um, Gauvin's Alexandria city pieces, but at the same time it it's very very wonderful. I and mean, you can see you can feel the darkness somewhat ominous, especially behind that throne. I wonder who the heck is supposed to sit in it. Very very good. Work. Hypatia of Alexandria was a Greek mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, and inventor. Though born in Greece, she eventually migrated to Alexandria, like many great minds of the time. It is there that she became the head of the Neoplatonist school of Alexandria. From most accounts, she was highly respected by her fellow Alexandrians, both as a teacher and a philosopher. With her death, 
the age of great ancient scientific discoveries came to an end. Draped woman, statuette found in Alexandria, 3rd century BCE, photo copyright Roman Rampalis, Musée de Louvre, Hervé Lewandowski. Hmm, tufty dicks, tis rimasifere. This is mm -hmm. the only woman in here, this woman taking records, or perhaps it's intended to be mm -hmm. a statue. Mm -hmm. Polemicus <laughs> was born in Cyrene and educated in Athens. After his studies, he moved to Alexandria to work in the Great Library. A poet and a critic, he strongly rejected the epic format of Homeric poems and instead fervently supported a shorter, more judiciously formulated style of poetry. His epigrams and elegiac poems were emulated by later poets. His work was extremely popular, second only to Homer's own works. Interesting. So, it's possible he had like a form of haikus, though I have not read his work, so I will... Marble statue of a draped, seated man, possibly Kalamachos, 1st century BCE, Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York. Apologies. It was in Alexandria that mathematician Euclid the father of geometry, wrote the elements, laying out the foundational work of what would become modern algebra and number theory. Euclidean geometry would become one of the most influential systems in the evolution of mathematics. Euclid Founder of Geometry 300 BCE, 18th century, photo copyright, Museum National de Histoire Naturelle, distributed by Roman Grand Palace, image du MNHN, okay, Bibliothèque Centrale. Apologies for my butchering French language. Almost reverse and most geometry as well as the mathematics and geography. Archimedes on the equilibrium planes would be the best edition of all the teachings. Διδαχθήνε ποιήση και όρχηση ανησυχτά. Όχι μόνο γεωμετρία και ρητορική. Ζω πολύ δαπανηρό πολιτικό συμμετοχή για τον αραπόσιτο. Πάλι με βραδύνα. Πάλι σκότου είναι ήλιο. Αρκούν να σου γίνει πάρα αυτά από τα πράγματα. Προσυνάντηση με τα πράγματα. Όρνηθε και χείρι. How do you calculate the circumference of the Earth with a camel, two sticks, and shadows cast by the sun? This is what Eratosthenes of Cyrene described in his principal work, Geography, while he was director of the Great Library of Alexandria. He is credited for the invention of the armillary sphere around 250 BCE. Map of the World by Aristophanes. 
Kings of Cyrene, circa 240 BCE, 1803. Stats Bibliothek zu Berlin, Karin Bittelow, Berlin, Germany. Photo copyright BPK, Berlin. Distributed by Roman Grandpalis. Image BPK. And so, yeah, we see a remarkably accurate um, Mediterranean map. The things tend to uh, cough out a little bit by um, India, Libya, or Africa. And Apollon, which is, or Albion, which is supposed to be Britain, and pretty darn good for someone in 240 BCE. The earliest known and most complete armillary sphere of antiquity was the Meteoroscopion of Alexandria with an imposing nine rings compared to the three or four of most other astrolabes. Known as the Zodiac Krikatoi amongst the Greeks, the Meteoroscopion was used to determine the location of celestial bodies around the Earth. Every self-respecting astronomer of antiquity would have sought to use this tool to better understand the celestial movements. Armillary sphere made by Jean Baptiste de, de Lure and Jean Pigeon, Dauphin's Chamber, Paris, 1705 to 1705. Photo copyright Roman Grand Palais, Chateau de Versailles, Gerard Blot. Pythagoras of Samos was a well-known and respected philosopher and mathematician. He is best known for the Pythagorean theorem. However, there is proof that the theorem existed in Babylonia and India long before Pythagoras was born, casting some doubts as to who exactly originated the theorem. <laughs> The philosopher, the philosopher Pythagoras, shown teaching, 1493. Photo copyright BNF, distributed by Roman Grandpalis. Image BNF. And yeah, you can tell um, whoever painted this clearly was um, not working with, you know, ancient Greek styles. He was working with the styles that he knew, which were the medieval styles, as you can clearly see by headdresses of the woman. You can see by the monk attire, these men, you know, medieval knights, yeah. So that's the end of the Great Library of Alexandria. I'm curious as to what the world says. Oh, the Pythagoras is proved that the writing of the triangle is the fixed and opposite of the triangle. It's not only geometry and rhetoric, it's the creation of the workers who live in the Merisios. Uh -huh. See, I'd say, you know, um, <sighs> little itty bitty ones on the sides and stuff. Those are probably, you know, uh, uh -huh. maybe <clears throat> 300 pages, I'd say. Uh -huh. the big fat ones <clears throat> are, um, you know, textbooks. That would be like mm. over. Yeah, very, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that is 
the end one minute so yeah good to put a few more in one I'll have to alter the description a little bit but um yeah I hope you enjoyed it oh, it's a nice little garden I find these raised lily pads very interesting. I've never seen them in real life in which I think a little plant garden with some different trees. I assume these are both. <laughs> Αυτό εκείνη λέξαντα ουκ πλέον οι ρασθένες ότι έβρουν ευτύχημα άλλων ουκ και δέδο και επεξήγησαν τι να Garden and wonderful information So, with that being said Thank you for watching This is Oscar R. Hoover And yeah Have a good night, or a good day Whatever Bye